The Vizio P-Series Quantum X is one of those TVs that is rare for several reasons, but mostly because it's aiming to be a high-end TV with all the fixings you'd want and more, but also wants to come in at a price that's lower than even the mid-range 2019 HDR TVs out there. And the thing is, I think it might be one of the best values out there. And this is the review. Stick around. Perfect. What's going on guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover. And on this channel, we do reviews and comparisons of home theater tech like TVs like these to help you find the best audio and video tech out there and get the most out of them. So if you're new here, then definitely hit the subscribe button and come along for the ride. Vizio is of course the budget TV manufacturer and as I mentioned in the unboxing and overview video, they are trying to corner the high-end TV market with the Quantum X and initially I had some issues with it that made me kind of skeptic but I have to say that today the TV is actually pretty compelling. It's a full array local dimming TV that comes in either 65 inches or 75 inches screen size. The smaller version has 384 dimmable zones while the larger version has 480. It supports HDR10, Hybrid Log Gamma HLG, Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus as of the November 2019 firmware update. That makes it one of the only TVs that can say it supports all HDR formats. Panasonic and Philips are two other manufacturers that can say the same but their TVs aren't available in the US. It has 5 HDMI 2.0 ports and of those HDMI 5 is a low latency port for low input lag standard def gaming. That would be best for gaming on HD or lower risk consoles because if you have an HDR console I'm sure you'd want to make full use of it. We'll get into gaming performance in a little bit, but let's first talk about the design. The TV has pretty thin bezels and some chrome accents, a tasteful amount, not enough to be gaudy or distracting. The edges have a chamfer design that adds to the look overall and it looks good. I like it. That said, the feet are wide set and are about four and a half feet apart and that's on the smaller version. If you're wall mounting it though, that wouldn't really be an issue for you, but everyone else should keep that in mind. While we're talking design, let's talk about the remote. Now, it's a solid brush metal design with soft touch plastic buttons and has app shortcut buttons for Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, among others. It can be used to control other devices like your cable box or disc player though and needs line of sight to communicate with the TV. Given the price of the TV, I'm not especially surprised by this, still it's kind of disappointing. But hey, you could always buy a universal remote if you don't already have one which would absolutely solve that problem. The TV runs Vizio's SmartCast OS which is feature packed. It has Chromecast and AirPlay 2 compatibility which is very good for a budget TV. There are also a lot of streaming apps available and more via Chromecast. But you kind of pay for that wide selection of apps because I can only describe the OS as painful. The OS is slow and often struggles to keep up. I found myself pressing the buttons multiple times because the navigation is so slow to the point that it didn't seem like my presses were being registered. This is one of those times where I recommend getting a streaming box if you're gonna get this TV, especially if you do a lot of streaming. Okay, enough waiting, let's get on to the good stuff, the picture and why I think this is such a compelling value of a TV. As I said before, this TV supports all the HDR formats out there, so you can watch everything in the HDR formats that they were mastered in. The screen is glossy, but it gets very bright. Bright enough so reflections wouldn't necessarily be an issue in a bright room with a lot of ambient lighting. It's a full array local dimming TV and it has more local dimming zones than any other TV in its price range that I know of. And why that's good is so that the individual backlight zones can be turned off on any part of the screen that's dark. So that helps to improve the contrast and reduces blooming. Most notably in scenes where there is a bright object surrounded by shadows or just darkness. Or that's what it should do. But the backlight is another one of the areas that I took an issue with. I think the amount of blooming on this TV is a bit much given the amount of local dimming zones that it has. On the input selection screen, it's very visible but that's more of a challenging scene because of the bright white text on a black background. So I could excuse that. But I've even noticed it on TV logos 
subtitles and subtitles. I think this is the opposite of the TCL8 series mini LED TV that I also compare this TV to. I think where the TCL is very aggressive with its backlight management, the Vizio is a bit lax and could use some optimization. The backlight can be uneven and leads to what I would call flashing in a test scene that I ran with the Starfield in the Spears and Monsel demo disc, but thankfully that isn't an issue in the real world viewing. The picture in HDR mode is good. The TV has several picture presets from the typical standard and vivid to game mode and the more accurate calibrated and calibrated dark picture modes, among others. But before the November update, I noticed that the backlight would struggle to keep up with changes in scene brightness. So when a scene changed from bright to dark, then the backlight would still be in the bright mode for about half a second and then it got dimmer slightly after. It was very distracting, but I'm happy to say that I haven't seen it since the firmware update. The picture overall is great though. It's definitely a case of a TV punching above its weight. Motion handling was also great. The TV handled motion well enough that there wasn't any jitter and color gradation was smooth without banding. There was definitely color shifting and contrast loss with off-axis viewing. The enhanced viewing angle setting did improve it, but not by that much. It basically shifted the contrast. One thing for sure though, is that the sweet spot for watching this TV is narrower than the other 2019 TVs that I've reviewed. As far as watching lower quality content goes, 1080p upscaling was pretty good. Non-native video had some artifacting in fast moving scenes, but overall I consider its upscaling ability to be more of a strength than a weakness, especially with 1080p material. I did notice some dirty screen effect on test scenes and before the November 2019 update, I did also notice some screen door effect on the gaming side, but thankfully that hasn't been repeated since the update. The dirty screen effect still exists though. Gaming mode is also good, but needed some edits to make it better. The default image had a lot of flickering, which is due to either the backlight or black frame insertion. After comparing this TV to the TCL mini LED TV, you could really see how washed out the image was in game mode in comparison, or even if you saw the gaming demo that I did. But thankfully the flickering and the color issues can be fixed with some changes to the picture settings. Depending on when you're watching this video, I'll have a link to the best picture settings that's linked in the card up there. That said, the gaming experience is great once I adjusted the colors and backlight. The colors can be vivid and overall the contrast is also great. Input lag is also a non-issue and is in the mid to low 20 milliseconds range. And even lower if you're using the low latency HDMI 5 port, but again that port doesn't support HDR. So is this a bad buy, a good buy, or a great buy? Well, I think it's actually a great buy. So with that verdict, who is this TV for? Well, I think if you're looking for the best budget TV that you can get right now that's feature packed with a great picture that I think gives you more than you actually pay for, then this is it. It's a great TV with a few usability concessions, but has a great picture that really improves once you make some changes to the default settings. I've left links in the description for those of you who want to learn more about it or even buy it, or those of you who just want to see some other videos I've made on it. Share your thoughts in the comments. Are you planning to get this TV? Did you already get one? Let me know. If you haven't checked out the merch store recently, then you should definitely do that because we have some awesome t-shirts in there. Thanks for watching and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, this has been your friend and neighborhood villa man saying, peace.